So how bad is it? Oh, quite extreme, I'm afraid. While most of the warp gates are still operational, a number of their systems have degraded with the passing of time. This is why we never encountered a host at the station in our solar system. Those controls have been damaged beyond repair by the time it was found. So let's get to the point. What are we looking at here? Very well. We might be able to program the station to jump us to Earth, but the chances of us actually reaching Earth, well, they're less than 0.2%. You have to take into account how many stations are in the network, and due to the degradation that even when we do jump... I understand, Mr. Gareth. Is there any way you two can, I, I don't know, repair the damage? You're supposed to be a genius, Professor Baker. Captain... While I and Gareth have spent a great deal of time studying the warp station back in our own system, when you get right down to it, we're little more than cavemen who have come across a digital radio. Sure, when we play around with it, we might turn it on and turn the dial, but getting down to explaining how it works and fixing it when it breaks down? (laughs) No, Captain. Even with a genius of my magnitude, I fear this is beyond me, at least for the time being. What about the host? Maybe it can help us fix the station. No, I'm I'm afraid not. Whilst the host is designed to meet and greet travellers who come through the gate, it's not a maintenance programme. But it's helping us update our system on the Art Bell. That's part of its programme, to aid travellers using the gate. However, the upkeep of the stations was left to the crew stationed here. And they're all dead. So basically you're telling me our chances of getting home are... Somewhere between slim and none. Darker Project presents Far Horizons. Episode 4, The Long Road Home. Written by Eric Busby. There's something you wanted to show me, Artemis. We launched a series of probes. I figured we might be here a while and would need to refuel at some point. Good thought. However, the station can refuel us if we need it. Good to know, but one of the probes found this. It's a planet. Oxygen, nitrogen, organic spectrum, fresh water. It's capable of support of human life. The station host told us there was a thriving civilization there. Maybe there's someone there who can help us repair the warp station. Well, the thing is, sir, we didn't detect any transmissions or signs of civilization. Donna was thinking we could take the George Nori down and have a look around. George Nori? It's what she started calling the pod, sir. It's been catching on with the rest of the crew. But I decided to send the probe further in. That's when we started detecting levels of high radiation. These images are what's left of towns, major cities. Every one of them has been destroyed. The aftermath of a nuclear conflict. Was it planet-wide? Yes, sir. If there were people living down there, they all died a long time ago. The planet's nothing but a graveyard. Now all you have to do is hook this to your ship's structural network. All should be well after that. That's it? That's all we have to do to safeguard the hull? Warp energy can be very stressful to ship's hulls, especially one as primitive as this. Primitive? When we're done, this will be the Combat Information Center. From here, we'll be able to control all of the ship's functions with state-of-the-art equipment. It was not my intent to insult you, sir. Simply to point out that other races have technology that is superior to yours. Hey, it'll get the job done, so lay off. Lay off? I do not understand what you mean. Never mind. Is that all? Or is there something else you wanted me to adjust? I am quite finished. I believe the next time you make a warp jump, your ship will suffer no ill effects. Wonderful. So go bug somebody else now. Bug? Just go away. As you desire. I thought he'd never leave. Whoa, whoa! Back the power level down. Oh, sorry, Chief. Got distracted. Well, you need to focus. For starters, you're using the wrong tool. 
Using that is, I don't know, like trying to install a window with a sledgehammer. Right, right. Oh, sorry about that. D- did you hear? What the team found over on the station? The whole place was full of corpses. That's the captain's problem, Cat, not ours. Right. Yeah, of course. And that host thing? Why does it look like a balding butler from the 18th century? I was told it's taken on the appearance that it believes will make us feel comfortable. Well, speak for yourself, Chief. Butlers have always scared the hell out of me. <sighs> However, it told me that there's something wrong with the warp gate. That we might not be able to get back home. I... Look, Cat. I don't know what's going on over there. I just know we've got to get the art bell in shape so we can get out of here. I don't know if we can get back or not, but I do know if we don't get this job finished, we won't be going anywhere at all. Right. <laughs> yeah. Focus on the job at hand. Good girl. One crisis at a time. Just a little bit more. Perfect. It's online. And this does what again, Todd? It allows our computers to link up with a warp station. It'll let them know who we are and where we've been by updating the station's host. But that's not all. Watch this. How are you doing, Jeeves? I am fully operational and all of my systems are functioning perfectly. That's... that's the host's voice. Yes, I was able to integrate part of its programming into the ship's main computer. It's advanced enough to monitor all the ship systems as well as aid us in day-to-day operations. It can even pilot the ship. So what's to keep it from taking over the ship whenever it wants to? I imagine the same thing that keeps it from taking over our minds. Uh, want to run that by me again? (laughs) One of the functions of the warp stations, they telepathically translate everything said to us. People can speak in their native languages, but we'll be able to understand them in English. Really? Yeah, it seems to work if we have to read something as well. Kind of neat, eh? No, I think it's kind of freaky. I don't like the idea of someone getting inside my head. Donna, it, it's a passive program. It's not going to do anything to you. Apart from letting you understand what people are saying, that is. Well, I still don't like it. Think about it this way. It's a hell of a lot better than learn a new language every time we come out of a warp jump. Isn't that right, Jeeves? That is correct, sir. There is nothing to worry about, my dear Donna. Nothing to worry about. You know, my dad said that same thing to my mother one night. Nine months later, I was born. What's that supposed to mean? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. I swear she's never happy. Now where's my laser spanner? Ah, there we go. You you can't be serious about this, sir. I wish I wasn't. I've been doing some reading, hoping that something in these books might give me an idea of what we should do next. But we're all cut off from home and alone. That's why I've chosen to do this. I won't lie. It's going to be a big change for the men. They're used to taking their orders from you, not some corporate executive. Then you might have to smack a few heads around. No one has ever been in a situation like this. And if we're to get home, we need to work together. All of us. I just wanted to make sure I had your support. (laughs) That goes without saying, sir. Good. Come in. You wanted to see me, Captain Lancer? Yes, Ms. Lockhart. Please come in. Is there anything else, sir? No, Sergeant. You have your orders. Dismissed. 
Very good, sir. Can I get you anything? Something to drink, perhaps? To be honest, I'd like to know what you want. Okay, right to the point. I would like to know how your people are doing. My people? This crew is broken up into two parties. The military, under me, and those sent by your corporation, and they answer to you. I would like to know how you and they are doing, given our current circumstances and all. To be blunt, the science team is excited beyond measure. They see this as the ultimate achievement of their life's work. And the others? Ah, well, that's another matter. The novelty of our situation has started to wear off. The reality of what we're facing is something of a concern. Being lost in space wasn't the job they signed on for. It's the same with a number of my troops. I've assured them that we're going to do everything in our power to get back home, but the truth is these warp gates haven't been maintained for... centuries. It could be years before any of us see Earth again, if ever. Is this why you wanted to see me? To tell me just how grim everything is? Makes you sound like an economist. No, it's not. As I've pointed out, up until now, our crew has been split. If we're going to make it through this, we need to face it together, as one crew. That's why I want to make you my acting XO. XO? Executive officer. You'll be second in command of the ship. With us working together, it will bring a sense of unity to the crew. With all of us working together, we will work to find a way back home. An interesting offer. What if I refuse? You have to admit, I'm not exactly trained to be a ship officer. No, but you are a trained business executive, trained to get the job done. You make decisions and give instructions to people. They carry them out. Commanding a ship isn't all that different. Except in your case, you play with guns. And the difference from a major corporation is what again? You know, the major difference between you and I, Captain? I just do what I'm told. The company knows all, sees all, and commands my obedience. But you, you have to make the big decisions. Your point? My point is this. When things go bad, I can honestly say that I've acted in good conscience on what information I had available. The only things that get lost are jobs and money. But when things go bad for you, people get hurt. People die. Being in command is a big decision, and yes, sometimes you have to make a hard choice and someone could die. But the bottom line, Susan, is this. If we're going to get through this, I need your help. I need you to step up and take charge. Because if we keep going as we have been, we might never see home again. I... I guess I really don't have a choice, do I? We always have choices. We just have to try our best to make the right ones. All right. I accept. But I'm not calling you, sir. Acceptable. But you will wear a uniform. I'm giving you the field rank of commander. I'll be addressing the crew in an hour, bring everyone up to speed on our situation, what we're going to do about it. Report to the CIC at that time. CIC? The CIC. The Combat Information Center. CIC for short. The Control Center for the ship. Think of it as the bridge. I guess that's not off-limit to me anymore. I'll see you there, Captain. And Commander? Yes, Captain? Thank you, Commander. Commander, glad to see you found a uniform. I was surprised ship stores had one at all, let alone in my size. Well, are you ready to do this? No, but now as good a time as any. Feel like I'm about to go into a board meeting. Then let's do this. Captain on deck. As you all were. A status report. All Combat Information Center stations are active and manned, sir. Thank you, Sergeant. All repairs are complete and primary functions are operational. Thank you, Chief. Main computer is online and all upgrades installed. Very good, Mr. Eccleston. I also want you to maintain ship's communications. Yes, sir. 
Flight systems are set to go. It's going to feel strange flying Ark Bell from down here. You'll get to use it soon enough, Mr. Kane. Mr. Eccleston, patch me in ship wide. Aye, sir. You're on, sir. Men and women of the Ark Bell, this is the captain. The discovery of the last few days has been an achievement unparalleled in human history, as well as painful for all of us here. As you know, the warp gate network does not operate with any accuracy. The chances of it sending us home are very slim. The challenge before us is a great one, but not new. Like ancient mariners who set forth on the high seas to see what lay beyond the far horizons, we too journey into the unknown. Our voyage may be long. But know this all. I shall do everything in my power to return this ship and crew to Earth. I make this promise to each and every one of you. Captain out. Channel closed. Okay, time we got started. CIC to all decks, stand by for warp jump. All decks report ready, Captain. Very good, Commander. Professor Baker, is our link with the warp station online? It is. The warp matrix is fully powered and standing by. Right. To boldly go and various statements to those effects. Flight deck, initiate warp jump on my mark. Three, two, one, engage. Engaging, sir. Featured in the cast were David Alt as Nicholas Lancer, Laura Post as Donna Briggs, John Specht as Artemis Kane, Ellie Hirschman as Joshua Baker, Judah Fries as Max Howlett, Megan Presley as Caitlin Cullen, Bill Holwig as John Collins, Amanda Fitzwater as Susan Lockhart, Michael Hudson as Gareth Shaw, Tom Davis Beale as Todd Eccleston, and Bruce Busby as the host. The series was created and directed by Eric Busby. Far Horizons theme composed by Kai Hartwig. Additional music composed by Kevin McLeod and Ambient Light. This has been a Darker Projects production. Imagine if the world as you know it was nothing more than an illusion. What if creatures like elves, dragons, vampires, zombies, and werewolves walk amongst you every day, but you never see them? This is the world I walk in. I am called Byron, and these are my chronicles. Listen to the Byron Chronicles at www.darkerprojects.com.